it. So, um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Noongar people um, on whose lands I am, and indeed the program will be here in Walpole, Western Australia. Noongar were people um, that were lived right throughout the lands of um, Southwest Western Australia, and it's a really special place. And I'd like to pay respect to their custodianship of the land and also to their elders past, present and um, future. And as we in this program travel um, on this land, I look forward to us all learning a little bit more about um, the history of the traditional owners in this place as well. I want to say hi, firstly, but I also want to get Helen um, de la Jolade, um, who is co-leading this wonderful program with me. Helen, where are you? Hello everyone, I'm calling from um, the side of the Snow River in East Gippsland, Victoria. So whilst Helen um, has a photo from the um, beach that is directly behind me, if I'm not mistaken, I'm the one with the authentic Western Australian um, background. I'm sitting out here in glorious sunshine. I'm not sure whether people can see, but in the distance behind me is the most beautiful view um, of the um, Walpole Inlet and um, out to the ocean um, beyond that I'm hoping we'll all become increasingly familiar with if you, um, journey along with us. I kind of want to say a, a couple of introductory th things about this program and firstly send the warmest invitation um, to everybody to join this program. Um, it's interesting, you know, Outward Bound is a special place. It's a special place um, that has a particular way of adventuring um, in the outdoors. Um, for us at Outward Bound, it's very much a sense of um, a personal growth, time, a time to connect with other people and a time to connect with um, the natural environment. Outward Bound has been doing this since um, the 1950s in, in Australia and indeed we've been um, running programs in this um, absolutely stunning Western Australia Walpole area for over, over 30 years. So this is a little bit like a backyard for us um, and funnily enough, you know, when I Think about why we've chosen um, Western Australia and Walpole for this somewhat special pet project of Helen and mine. Um, it is because um, of all of the areas, as much as we love them, them all, Walpole has a special place in all of our group leaders' heart. It's stunning. Um, it's a unique um it's a unique part of the world. It's it still has many aspects of, you know the wilderness um, that is so rare in in our um, increasingly impacted globe. Um, and we really want to have the opportunity to share that with, with other people. Um, and indeed in this instance, with other women, because um, we know that women um, sometimes like to approach um, adventuring outdoors a little bit differently. It's not about necessarily getting to the top of the highest mountain as fast as you can. It's actually about um, about the journey, um, and uh, that's what this program is is going to be um, all about. Um, for me, too, it's a, an opportunity to actually celebrate getting outdoors and um, and adventuring. It's been a really tough couple of years for everybody, I think, through COVID and for Outward Bound. We were badly impacted by the bushfires. Not so much here in Western Australia, um, but on the East Coast, we very much were. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting back out in the field. It's a long time since I was a group leader, but I can't wait to um, get my backpack on and uh, yeah, sleep under the stars with everybody. Um, and this one's special for me too, because my daughter is coming along. Um, so Leah, who be on this program because she's um, a rowing coach at the moment but um, on this Zoom call but Leah's coming along and so I'm really enjoy going to enjoy um, sharing with her um, what an, what the Outward Bound experience and what a what an adventurous program like this is is like um, and uh, you know I'm hoping we might have some other you know family groupings and mother and daughters or friends or um, whatever but we're expecting this to be an inclusive program um, that is, you know, um, will have a range of different people with different experiences. And that's something that will, will bring some strength and richness to um, the time that we share together. 
So that's kind of the, the intro from me. I think I get to handball to Helen at this point um, because Helen is our Outward Bound Head of Operations. She's the total guru in the field and watch her face scratch where I also say she was last year's, um, she was awarded Australian Outdoor Education Practitioner of the Year. We are in the safest, um, most experienced hands that you can be in when it comes to adventuring in the outdoor doors with Helen. So um, Helen, tell us a little bit about the program and, you know, walk us through what are we going to be doing? Where are we going? What is it? What is it going to be like? Amazing. Thank you, Lauren. What an introduction. Now I'm going to have to live up to this. <laughs> um, so I'll share my screen and we'll have a little bit of a look at the map together. Can you all see this? Excellent. So we are going to start in Walpole. So the heart of the southwest of WA. We're just below where the junction of the Indian Ocean and the Southern Ocean meet. So the area in Walpole is a true area of wilderness and it's got a lot of endemic um, flora and fauna. So we're incredibly lucky to be able to experience that down there. Um, we will start in Walpole and then we will make our way a little bit further south to Conspicuous Cliff, which is where um, we will really start our expedition journey. From there, we've got a, a campsite not too far from the coast and that will be our first day. We will get started with gear issue, ensuring that everybody is set up for the program. Um, and there'll probably be a bit of time for some beach sunsets and walking before we head off on our first expedition. This will take us not only along the coast, but also into the scrub, as we do our first little leg of off-track um, expedition. And we will get ourselves to the Franklin River, where we'll pick up our rafts and we'll do the first leg of rafting for the program, where we will cross the Nornalup Inlet. We will go camping in um, Nornalup Inlet on the coast, in a place called Circus Beach. Um, that place has been under um, a lot of studies at the moment in studying the effect of microplastic and the ocean currents and how plastic is moving in our surroundings. And there's an element of service that we do add there in um, rubbish collection. Once we cross the Nonolop Inlet, we will enter the deep river and paddle along um, the deep river until we get to a private property that we utilize that we call the block. We will spend a couple of days on the block and we'll challenge the group next with some roping activities. And I'm not gonna to reveal too much about that yet, but there'll be a challenge at height, but also a team um, building activity that we will set up on the block. Once we've had our roping activities on the block, we will go on to the next leg of our expedition, which will be some off-track navigation through the coastal bush um, to get to a really, really beautiful spot um, out of Long Point. And as you can see, there's this little peninsula, this little ad crop jutting out into the ocean, which is a big rocky ad crop um, where we will go camping just off the coast. And then we'll make our way to our um, solo spot. This program has got a 24 hour um, solo component where you will be given all of your gear for 24 hours in the bush on your own for an element of reflection and also resting after a few days on expedition. From there, we will um, do a final expedition that will take us to Crystal Spring, which will be the final um, leg of our program. So we've got a lot of things going on on this program with some rafting, some expedition, some off-track navigation, and some um, elements at height. Anything else you'd like to add, Lauren? Well, I think, Helen, everybody's going to want to know, um, you know, how hard is this? Can I do it? How fit do I have to be? And all of those sorts of things. So um, I kind of want to sort of reassure people in the first instance that um, I'm 57 and I am just of normal um, average fitness for a person of my um, 
Asian genre, so to speak. Um, and I'm anticipating that there'll be times where I'll be thinking, oh, goodness me, I am I might need to pause as I puff up this little bit of a sand dune. Um, but I am anticipating that I will find it, um, uh, it that it will be totally achievable. Um, and, uh, you know, the whole idea of this program is actually inclusivity. So we always stop when we need to, rest when we need to, support people as they need um, help. Um, we make, we'll make decisions as a group, you know, in terms of how hard we and fast we want to push, um, push ourselves. And, you know, when there are times when we want to get up and watch the sunrises, which I have to say are truly spectacular, um, or when we want to have a sleep in because we worked hard the day before. So there'll be quite a lot of um, self-agency and choice around how we manage ourselves um, as a group, but it is a program that is designed to be um, uh, inclusive. Um, I'd also say too, you know, here in Walpole, I did the high ropes elements this morning myself. Um, so um you know, good fun, um, and, you know, and achieve. Um, so I, I kind of want to put people's minds at rest, you know, of course, as with everything, you know, the fitter, the fitter and healthier you are, the easier those things comes with you, but it, the aim is for us to be inclusive. And I think Helen, the maximum in any one day is around about 10 Ks. Am I right on that yeah, one? That's correct. And there is a lot of flexibility in the program line and which route we take. Um, there's ways to making the program more challenging if you're up for a challenge and if you're traveling really well. And there's also ways to make the program less physically challenging if we need that to be an option. Um, so plenty of flexibility written in there and um, a really conscious decision in breaking up the legs of expedition. Um, having a rafting component allows us for a bit of a different kind of exercise and a non-weight bearing exercise as opposed to hiking. Um, with PAC. So we'll make sure that everybody is feeling ready and that we're managing the group really well in that sense. And Helen, um, I'm just doing the question asking here for, for other people. What are we thinking that the weather is, is going to be like and what sort of conditions are we like, you know, things that we'll mm. have to factor in, you know, green mm. mozzies or um, uh, flies and so forth. Yeah, awesome. Um, so January in the southwest is pretty warm. It is the middle of summer. However, we are in part of Australia that experiences a lot of rainfall throughout the year. So no matter what the time of the year is, we can expect to have a little bit of rain um, throughout the program. Not necessarily a large amount of volume in one go, but more consistency in lower drizzle and lower showers. Um, so having a really good raincoat is going to be really important. And then January in Western Australia is pretty um, dance for flies. The marsh flies have come out, the mosquitoes can be, can definitely be out at that time of the year, especially if it's been a little bit wet. So what we'll provide is a single mozzie net um, that you'll be able to use every night. Um, what is a really good addition to your kit, however, is a little head net to be able to wear around camp in the evenings. Um, so well, yeah. look, this one I prepared earlier. There you go. That is perfect. And that'll make your life just that much more comfortable um, when the mozzies come out around um, sunset. However, at that time of the year, we'll have a lot of daylight, long days, which allows us plenty of time to do things and just enjoy being in such a beautiful part of the world. Um, a little bit of rain is never an issue. The ground and the environment is used to getting water, so we are nowhere near as concerned about the extreme weather that we're experiencing on the East Coast at the moment. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting just having been around a couple of the campsites this morning. Um, everything varies and, you know, you never know what um, insects, creatures or the conditions are going to be like at any one given point in, in time. The wind can come through and there's no March flies or mozzies or, um, you know, you can have the opposite and, you know, there's a whole heap of them. Um, the guys are pretty good at um, making sure that they select uh you know campsites and routes that sort of fit the conditions of the time um and being summer too helen i think you know it it will be beautiful i think being on the beach and on the inlet so opportunities for us to hop in and out of the water um and have a bit of fun uh with that uh as well 
Absolutely. Should we talk a little bit about what the day to day will look like? Right. Great. Um, so some really good topic that I'm sure everybody's curious about is um, what will you be sleeping in? So at Adwood Bend, we use bivvies, which is an open sided shelter and gives us the luxury of being really close and really connected to the environment. Um, also really nice, getting a bit of a breeze. It really helps with the mozzies. Um, and this is also why we provide a single mozzinet. So you'll be sleeping in a mozzinet and well protected from the bugs. Um, whilst you'll be able to experience what it's like to sleep really close to nature. We will also provide, obviously, um, your sleeping gear, so grand sheet, grand mat, um, and sleeping bag if you um, wish to hire one from us. Um, in terms of the food, we'll provide all of the food for the length of the program. That includes breakfast, lunch, dinner, and many snacks. Um, the way to get through a lot of physical activity in the outdoors is pretty much consistent snacking. We like to provide both um, sweet and savory snacks. So, sorry, you can expect a lot of variety in those, but the day is pretty standard in how it is set up. The breakfast will be a selection of cereals, a uh, piece of fruit, some yogurt every other day. Um, and we use padded milk because we're on expedition. So something a little bit different than being able to pour straight from the bottle. Lunch is make your own sandwiches, bread or wraps, lunch meat, fresh vegetables, some beetroot, some corn, um, a variety of things. And dinner is where really the variety is. So we'll have a different dinner every night. And that varies from vegetarian stir fry all the way to spag bowls or burritos. Um, we can cater to a variety of dietary, vegetarian, vegan, lactose free, gluten free. All of that is totally, totally manageable by us. And we're very used to those dietaries. Um, and in terms of snacks, we've got trail mix, fruit, uh, vita wheat spreads like Vegemite and jam and honey. Um, we also have got rice crackers, cheds, um, and sometimes some biscuits. So yeah, a little bit for everything. We've got also the ability obviously to make hot meals and hot drinks. Yeah, anything else you'd like to add, Lauren? No, that sounds really, um, really yummy. It's probably just worthwhile adding that we do a number of we do food drops along the way. So we're not having to carry all of our food for the 10 days. Um, we've got a backup team that um, toodles along the four wheel drive access and um, drops us off, you know, eskies with um, fresh stashes of, of food and things. So um, that eases the load on our backs and also gives us the luxury of being able to have more fresh foods rather than having to rely on um, dried expedition um, food the whole time. So I think that's um, that's pretty pretty good. Shall I ask the next question, Helen? I'm getting good at this. So, Helen, um, how do we manage going to the toilet and um, periods? My favorite topic. I thought you'd never ask. Um, so, going to the toilet is very straightforward. Um, in a bush environment, we have got a couple of options. Um, we are very big on leaving no trace and being um, custodians of the land. So we'll either, either use um, public toilets. So we might be coming through Nat Park facilities and have access to a public toilet, which is great. Um, if we are at a more remote campsite, part of the stashes and the drops that Lauren was just talking about will be that we will get dropped what we call a bomby, which is a, in a sense, a portable toilet in the form of a bucket that we will set up. We poo in the bucket and then we'll leave that bucket behind for a logistics team to deal with it. That is the best way to ensure that we're not leaving any traces in the environment. Um, our bucket come with a little plastic toilet lid on them so you can sit and enjoy, as we say, a poo with a view. Um, there's something pretty, pretty exceptional about pooing in the natural environment and enjoying the scenery. Um, then the final way that we deal with human waste is should we be on an expedition and not be at this designated campsite or have access to a logistics drop, then we will dig a trench. We'll carry a shovel with us uh, for those time when nature is just calling and we gotta go and we'll talk you through how deep it needs to be and how far from water, water courses it needs to be in order to have a minimal impact. Um, as far as periods are concerned, totally normal to get 
your period and that might happen at a time that you do not expect it because of the variety in the physical activity and the diet and just a different environment can trigger hormonal changes um, and not have you necessarily align with your normal cycle. That's totally fine. So we carry extra pads and tampons in our first aid kit if you were taken by surprise. We also recommend that everybody takes uh, pads and tampons just in case um, your cycle shows up at a different time. If you happen to have your period in on the bush, in the bush, well on program, pretty straightforward. If you use a disposable item like a pad or a tampon, then we'll also give you um, brand paper bags and plastic bags. So you can dispose the pad or the tampon in the brand paper bag and then wrap it up in a plastic bag and then leave that in the rubbish. At every campsite where we get logistic support, we'll also be able to leave our rubbish behind. So that's really easy. If you use a, a reusable item like a cup, perhaps, then you'll have access to water and hand sanitizer and hand washing um, every night so and every day while we're on program. So that makes it really easy to manage in the bush as well. And that is totally an option. Um, yeah, does that answer your question, Lauren? Um, yeah, I was just going to add two um, moon cups or something that people sometimes choose to use. And um, that's another option that's totally viable and um, quite doable. I've just had to turn my camera off, guys, because I've had to, it's, it's all very good to sit out in the sunshine, but my phone battery's just gone um, nearly flat. So I'm just maneuvering around to my charger. Um, so my background's probably going to be not quite as stunning as it was a minute or two ago. Um, but yeah, I think that that kind of cups it off, Helen. Um, it always got feels a, a little bit daunting the at the start. Yep. I was just reading the question in the chat about how many people go on this trip and when do we need to book a spot by? Oh, oh is that for me, Back. Ellen? Yeah. Um, we don't have a set limit on, on this at the moment. Um, we might, um, you know, we're hopeful we might have a couple of groups. Um, group sizes are typically somewhere between in often around the 14, 15 mark, they can go to a maximum of, of 18. They'll probably be at least, you know, 10 or 12, but we'll see how we go with numbers in terms of one or two groups. We're also probably anticipating that there'll be a little bit of times when we're um, all together, you know, in terms of um, start and finish um, and some of the um, things that we do, we might do together. We'll, we're going to play it a little bit by ear while we see how many um, how many groups we get. Um, in terms of when should you book by, um, there is a 10% discount if you book by the end of October. So that's a good reason to um, uh, hop in and, and get a spot. Um, we don't have a sense, we, we typically do most of the catering a good um, couple of weeks before program, Helen, don't we? I mean, we can yes. cope with last minute changes, but you know, we can't, what we can't cope with is, you know, 20 or 30 people booking the week, you know, two days before. So it's sort of about, and most people won't. And indeed, um, from a pragmatic perspective, um, flights are typically cheaper if you book in advance, if you are flying into Western Australia. Helen, maybe we should talk a little bit about just the logistics of that side of things as well. Um, sure. Do you, should we answer Ella's question about the, the discount first? We have. Oh, yeah, have there's a code, isn't there? By the end of October. I actually don't know the answer to that. Benny, do you know the answer to that? A deposit is fine by the end of October. Thanks, Benny. And is there a code for that um, discount, Benny? I think there is a code. I think I've seen it somewhere. We'll make sure that we put that out there um, so we can follow up with um, with that to make sure that we've got that inf information um, in terms of that 10% um, discount. So, Helen, what about the logistics side of things? In terms of arrival, do you mean? Yeah. Mm, fantastic. Um, so the logistics are to get yourselves into Perth. 
And then from there, Aro and Ben will book a bus and pick everybody up at a designated time. And then we'll transport everybody down to Walpole. And the same is true in reverse. So you don't have to get yourself to Walpole. You only have to get yourself to Perth. Um, part of the booking process will be also to confirm your arrival details in Perth so we can make sure that everybody's there at the right time um, and be, be all together. Um, Helen, one of the other things that I just wanted to touch on too, I can probably take my sunglasses off, off even though now I've come into the office um, out of the sunshine, um, is um, you know, one of the things that we're hoping that everybody will feel with this program is that, you know, you'll feel really comfortable and confident um, adventuring and hiking in the outdoors. You know, you'll pick up quite a few skills in terms of um, how to map use, navigation use, um, how, how to navigate, um, and also some first aid as well. So some of those sort of things that, you know, can be hurdles for you thinking, you know, I'd love to go up to go hiking. I'd love to get more into to hiking. You know, we, we think this program is a really good platform to give you some, some skills and confidence um, to, yeah, em embark on, um, a, a lifetime love of, you know, of the outdoors is, a, is another thing that we um, feel pretty confident that you'll all go away with. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll be really happy to chat more about that on program because there's so many tips and tricks that will only come out while we're doing it as to how to find your personal flow in the outdoors and how to make it work for you personally. So I'm just, I, I have to put those back on, Helen, I've realised because they've got my lenses in them. My, my other ones I've left out there, so I need to put them on to, to read. So I'm kind of keen, we've had quite a few questions as we've gone along. Um, uh, are there any other questions or concerns? You know, that's the other thing. What's in the back of your mind um, that you're thinking, oh, help, I'm, you know, I'm not sure... Um, I'm not sure about what to wear on my feet. My feet have always been problematic or, um, you know, am I going to be, uh, you know, do I have to share a tent? With, well, it's not a tent, it's just kind of a bivy or, you know, any other concerns that people might have or curiosities too. Does anybody want to say anything? It's a bit confronting, isn't it, Helen? It's all right. When, we, when, we, when we're all together in person, we'll totally get a response because um, that's um, very much the outward bound way is having, um, having a yarn. One of the, um, oh, one of the things questions. that... Oh, good. What, yeah. What do the bags look like and what about the sleeping bags? Um, our backpacks are canvas backpacks. You can see in the background on my photo, you can see some of our participants wearing the backpack. Um, they are 65 liter canvas backpacks with a waist belt, a chest belt, and an adjustable harness. Um, and they're very sturdy in the outdoors. What about sleeping bag? I'm not sure I understand your question, Fiona. Do you mean about the hire or about what they look like? I actually have one that's hanging on the clothesline behind me that I could theoretically show people. The sleeping bags that we have that we can hire and the reason we've introduced hire since COVID because we now have a um, fully, you know, it's fully washed and um, after every single single use, they're a, um, they're a really sturdy um bag that's that's warm because the weather can get up um here in in Walpole um they're not a down they're a um synthetic fabric which is actually a little bit more secure in um in a wet context um but you know you totally feel free to bring your own um uh sleeping bag mm -hmm. 
We've got another we'll question from Ella about wanting to leave stuff behind when you go on the expedition. Um, so part of our gear issue on the first day of program, we'll also make sure that you have got anything that you don't need all in the bag that you're bringing with you. And all those bags will be labeled really clearly and left in a big wool belt behind and they'll be taken back to base camp and stored securely while you are on program. We'll also make sure that everybody sets up a halfway drop. So you'll have the opportunity about halfway throughout the program to get that drop back and to change into a fresh set of clothes or to get more socks out and to get rid of stuff that you don't need. Um, because you may have realized that after carrying, I don't know, some dry shampoo for four days, you actually do not want to carry that anymore. Yeah. The other thing that's probably um, worthwhile mentioning too is that we have a base, which is where I popped into the office here, um, up on the hill here in Walpole, which is where our backup crew are. Um, and we, if we have somebody who's got a, a small health issue um, that needs to come back to base or get medical attention for a day or two, we bring um, people back to base here. You know, we had an example um, uh, this week on a program where we actually had one of the um, students who, so we just whizzed her out of the the fields into the doctor to get antibiotics onto her antibiotics and then um fine to get back in the in the in the field so for scenarios like that if you know something um crops up that you know is um can be readily attended to within um a day or two we've got capacity to um support the program and support you like that You don't want to be at base typically, but um, you prefer, it's better being out on program, but it's totally um, a, a good backup option. So there's a question here. I have fr work on Friday, the 27th of Jan. So there's a logistics one for you, Helen. Mm. Um, our starting, our start date is strict and our end date is strict. Um, However, we've had situation in the past when someone had other commitments and they just need to be leave a day or two earlier and that's nothing impossible for us to manage. Um, it is always a shame when people leave earlier because that final debrief and that final evening with everyone is really, really special. Um, I'll be um, tricky on you and Michelle in terms of logistics and ensuring that you've got flights and movements uh, well-timed in order to get yourself back. But that's something that I totally encourage you to reach out to us with um, how it happened and what that could look like. Yeah, I think that's worthwhile an email and a bit of a conversation about Michelle. Excellent. Any other questions? Any other questions around, actually, I might ask this one, Helen, because um, I'm quite good at it. In terms of clothes, can you talk us through a little bit about what, of, you know, um, walking boots, pants, you know, and clothes um, would be a good idea? Absolutely. Uh, so in terms of hiking shoes, we want something that's going to be really comfortable to hike in. Um, you're going to be on your feet, whether we're hiking or paddling or doing activities at height, all day long. And so we want something that's going to be really comfortable for you. We do recommend hiking shoes with a bit of ankle support and something that might offer you an element of um, waterproofness. However, the key element is something that you have been wearing and you know works for you. There's nothing worse than coming onto an expedition program with a brand new pair of hiking boots and breaking them in might include some unpleasant blisters. So making sure that you have worn the shoes that you're going to be wearing and are really comfortable in them is going to be super important. Um, in terms of clothes, so we are on the coast. It's going to be summer. UVs are extreme and sun safety is really important. So it will be a requirement of Peru and Peru where to be everyone to be wearing long sleeve shirts like what Lauren and I are wearing, long sleeve pants, 
um, covering you all the way to the ankles and a sun hat is gonna be very important. Um, we do recommend things like a broad rim hat um, and something that might have a flap that covers your neck as well, just to ensure that we're staying well out of the sun. Um, breezeable fabric and synthetic are definitely the best. Cotton is not your friend in the outdoors because once it gets wet, it uses your own body heat to dry. So we really want to prioritize natural fiber like wool or complete synthetic like polyester, um, et cetera. Um, really easy, like work at shirts that you can find from Kmart for like $10, totally work in the outdoors or um, active workwear that also work or um, tradey wear, you know, those high V's long sleeve shirts with a nice color, bright orange, that's totally fine. Yeah, we, we'll be out in, in the elements. So actually having some protection um, from both the sun, from insects and indeed, you know, for when we're hiking through the bush for sort of like avoiding scratching your legs up um, is actually a really, um in really good part of of comfort is is mm -hmm. what i would say um and fortunately you know there there'll be times when we we can cool off um in the water and the river or the inlet and so forth we'll also make sure that we manage our days associated with if the weather is warm you know we'll be up early um and walk in the cool of the day and um sit under a tree um in in the heat of the day um I've got a question here from from Ginny. Hi, Ginny. Um, how well do I need to be able to swim to be in the paddling activities, Helen? Hmm, really good question. So everybody will be wearing a life jacket at all times. Um, it is totally fine to not be really comfortable in the water and still take part in the paddling activity. That's a chat that we'll have on the first day of program for people who may not be really comfortable in the water or not really strong swimmers then you will be in a boat with either me or Lauren, ensuring that, you know, we keep an extra an extra close eye on you. But no matter what, everybody will be wearing a PFD. So as long as you can float, you're totally fine to participate in the paddling activity. It is flat water paddling too. It is. So it's yeah. um it's not um it's not rapids per se. Deep river is quite a magical river it's very dark tannin um that weaves through um the pretty unique forests here um and um yeah you won't feel it ex exposed there from a safety perspective yeah. crossing the inlet is um flat water as well um and has variable conditions depending on the wind we have to keep our fingers crossed that the wind is at our back don't we helen Yes, that's fingers crossed, um, but more often than not, we get headwinds um, in the Walpole Inlet, but if the wind is in our back, we can set up a cell with our BVs and just sit down and make the most of the wind and cross the inlet. Um, we've got another question from Emily. Do you have any recommendations for sleepwear? So on the packing list, it'll say to bring two sets of thermals, and that's really important to ensure that you stay warm if the weather really drops. And the other really good thing about thermals is they're really comfy to sleep in. So what we recommend is that you've got your day clothes and then the set of thermal that you have to carry with you is what you can sleep in in the evening. Yeah, so the really interesting thing is, you know, when it comes to our clothes, other than, of course, that, you know, swap in, swap out sort of um, point, we're carrying our clothes with us. So I love that tension between, you know, do I really want to carry this versus, you know, do I really want to um, have another pair of something or other? So everybody makes different decisions on um, based on their, their preference, but... Um, I know I'll be packing as as light as I can, so I don't have to um, carry the weight and putting up with at times being a little um, a little bit on the wiffy side because we all will be. Um, the, the I think we'll it's it, it's interesting. Yeah, we'll we'll be in our natural. Then when we dunk ourselves in the um, you know, in the river or um you know, do the classic old freshen up um, uh, out of a water bottle. Um, yeah, it, we will look at glowing natural best. Helen, won't we? Absolutely. 
Excellent. Any other any other questions? How often will you be able to fill up water bottles? Fantastic question. Um, we will have access to water every single day, whether it is from a logistics drop, uh, where we get a resupply of food and water, or it might be from a natural water stream. We'll carry with us in the field some water purifier. So there's a few places where we fill up straight from a little, a little creek or a little brook, and then we'll purify the water with some MicroPure or AquaTabs. And I been here in the southwest is that it's an area that is not short of water so you know it's it's not one of those ones where you know we have to worry about you know saving every drop and everything like that it's um water is plentiful um and you know we'll have ready access to it All right, final chance for questions. So what I, I, I kind of got a question to the group. Oh, this is a really good one for Helen before that do. Um, oh, a couple, a couple more, Helen. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of got a question for the group too as to whether or not um, people would like to have the opportunity for a Zoom um a week before the trip or in that um a couple of days before the trip where people might have the um where we go have the opportunity for people to actually introduce themselves but also go these are my um boots do these look all right or you know some some of those last minute packing questions um so that's a question to you guys as to whether or not you think having um, another Zoom just a few days before trip would be um, uh, worthwhile. Cool. If you want to put a response in the chat. Hel Helen, you've got a couple here. Oh, mm. from, what's your favourite part of the landscape, Helen? Um, probably the coastal stretch around Long Point. That area is absolutely stunning um, and it's an incredible sunset spot it feels really remote because you're hiking um for a good day to get there and it feels really really special because there's no one else around and we have got this beautiful view across to an island um, so yeah i'm looking forward to being on long point um got a question about how to wear I in the boots that's a really great question the best thing you can do is wear them a little bit every day so pottering around the house, maybe, you know, doing some cooking, some cleaning, whatever you do in the evening at home, um, just so that your feet um, get used to the shoes and they also break in and mold the shoes around your feet. And then once you've done that for a few hours, taking them on some small hike, doing, you know, grocery shopping, around the block, walking the dog, all the things. So you're really, really getting comfortable in those shoes. And I think that was the two questions. The email question has been answered. Perfect. I think people have said yes to the, or somebody has, mm -hmm. um, to the, um, to the, um, to the another meeting, Zoom yeah. chat before, yeah, before we go. Um, and so that we can make sure that we've got any, um, do a few introductions and got anything else calculated. I was just going to say, I don't know whether people can see that one, if I put that up, up to there. That was the sunrise this morning um, over the over the inlet. You know, if, if for those of us who are from the the east, it's it's kind of weird getting used to um, the fact that you watch the the sun rise and set from a different perspective. Um, and the sun. Um, the sunrises and sunsets here are absolutely a rhythm where we're in the daylight, so to speak. So, um, and it's interesting, I'm reading a, a book, actually listening to a book, otherwise I'd read you a piece from it, um, called Phosphorescence at the moment. And it's a beautiful philosophical book about sort of the pursuit of um, uh, 
looking for the bright glowing things in life. So um, phosphorescence being the natural elements that glow in the dark. Um, and she's got a beautiful piece in her first uh, chapter that talks a little bit about how the sun rises and the sunset um, in Australia are um, iridescent, you know, celebrations of almost these flaming colours and how sunrise and sunset is a beautiful way of bookending the day um, and their moments of awe and wonder um, that, you know, holds you in a place with it, needing to just stare and, and take it in. And that's what we will have a lot of on this program, moments of awe and wonder as we um, go to some pretty unique parts of Australia and places that you'll um probably never never visit again is a, is a good chance as we're off the beaten track and um, the trees down here and the environment it, it's very different it has a different smell to the eucalyptus forest in other parts of Australia it's very different to the tropics um, and to the to the deserts that are in the centre and to the north of us um, and having the opportunity to sort of experience this um ecosystem is um is really special and really precious particularly the enormous tree forests which are um such a precious uh part of the landscape and so few parts of the world now have these um truly amazing forests um and we will stand within you know the tree trunks that are naturally hollowed um out um by past ancient fires um, where you can just stand encompassed by um, a tree, getting a big tree hug, so to speak. Um, and it's a really special, uh, really special um, landscape that I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to spending some really good, good time in. Susie, so, so can we take cameras on expedition? Yes, you can. Once again, you've got to think about weight um, and practicalities of it. But yeah, um, I think uh, bringing cameras and what we'll do too um, is we'll try and make sure that we um, have a few cameras in in the group too, so that we um, we can share photos because it's probably a bit silly if we all um, hike around a camera. Um, uh, but we can make sure that we've got some touch points for that too, and indeed use our um, backup guys to try and make sure that we've got um, the, uh, a, you know, a, a moment or two for a power pack support on a camera if need be too. I think that'll work all right, Helen, won't it? Mm, that'll be that. totally fine. If I'm having trouble finding the equipment I need, who can I contact? If you need these, um, the email address listed just above, um, feel free to reach out to mailbox at Adwood Band and I'll direct your inquiry to the right person. Please suppose you're on it, Awesome. Great. Final thoughts? Okay, I think I think we're pretty good. I just really want to, you know, I really I'm really excited about this. I can't deny it. I'm particularly even more excited having um speaking to you from Walpole. Um and indeed having been up on the high ropes. Kind of like, you know, um, I got this, um, you got this, we all got this. It's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be really, it's going to be really good fun. Um, and, yeah, but, you know, I know um, I did an Outward Bound program when I was in my um, in my early 20s and people always talk about them being life-changing experiences. For me, that's been true in, in many, many ways as um, as I find myself back here leading Outward Bound. Um, this will be a life-changing experience. You know, it's not often that we, you know, take uh, 10 days to step out and to step out with a, a, a group of women that we can um, develop friendships, share stories, support one another, inspire one another. Um, and also have a little bit of chill out time too. Um, and yeah, so I'm really excited and I hope you guys um, are all excited too and are happy to join us. I think we're calling that a wrap, Helen. So um, Benny, I think you're gonna make sure if that we put the code up on the website 
website if there is a code for the 10% discount. Yes, I will look into that and uh, find out what I need to find out. And you're very welcome to get in touch with us at mailbox at outwardbound.org.au. Um, the website also has a phone number you can call and speak to um, speak to someone directly. Or if you want to reach out by email, we can call you at a time that's convenient. So any any question is is very welcome as tonight has has shown. So. <laughs> Yeah, thanks everybody for um for hopping on. Um, yeah, and please feel free. There's no such thing as a um a silly um question when it comes comes to this. Um, we've all been in that place too that you actually think up the question the moment you hang up. Um, so as you um uh, yeah as you re reflect on it um and hopefully chat with your friends and family too about it you know if you if you do want to follow up with any questions we're more than um we're more than happy to to take your call